Have you ever wondered why some VFX in older movies, like for example this shot in Pirates of the Caribbean 3, look far better than the ones in newer, more modern movies, like for example this one in Black Panther? Hmm. Even despite the technology being a lot more advanced nowadays, we still often see big Hollywood movies with crummy looking CGI that almost seems as though it's been stuck on with an old piece of duct tape as an afterthought. But VFX companies aren't actually the ones to blame for this cack handed looking wonkiness. You see, of course, VFX technology has its limitations, and any director or VFX supervisor who respects this also knows that the best visual effects happen when you use practical effects as a base and digital effects to enhance and augment that base. And this is true for three main reasons, which was beautifully demonstrated in Pirates of the Caribbean 3 at the world's end. Number one, grounding. If we see something in a shot that is obviously real, it makes it easier for us to accept something within that same shot that may not be so. For example, before the Endeavour gets destroyed, this shot makes us believe that it's being sandwiched between the Black Pearl and the Flying Dutchman. But in reality, the only ship that was real here was the Black Pearl. The Endeavour was actually a 16-foot miniature that was shot in front of a blue screen soundstage, and the pyro elements were shot on a larger miniature on a separate plate. However, the Flying Dutchman, that was 100% CGI. The other two ships here were used to help frame the shots and to create realistic water interactions for the Endeavour miniature model and the Flying Dutchman CG asset, thus making us believe that they were really sat on the same ocean. And so, after cleverly tricking us into believing that the Endeavour was really getting shot from both sides, they now had to make us believe it was really exploding all around Cutler Beckett. And this again was done by selling us one reality and then adding to it. So, first on a practical set of the deck, they shot the actors and stuntmen abandoning ship. Then explosions and air cannons full of debris were carefully positioned and choreographed to follow the action and filmed on a separate plate. Then they did a motion control shot of Beckett going down the stairs and that motion control shot was used to time all the pyro elements so that when both shots were composited, they would follow Beckett precisely as he descended the stairs. These shots were then all composited along with the backgrounds, CG debris, dust, smoke, additional digital explosions and fire, and of course the digital replacement of the banister and its subsequent destruction, completing the illusion. Number 2. Better Acting the second reason for using practical effects as a base is to give the actors something physical to work with so their interactions are more realistic and therefore make us believe that what we're seeing on the screen was actually really happening in front of the actor. For example, in this sequence, a mini Jack Sparrow is hanging from one of Big Jack Sparrow's dreadlocks. Now, in order to give Johnny Depp something to interact with, they actually built a huge set of dreadlocks for him to hang from, and even raised one dreadlock in the air in order to give it some movement. Another example is the crab scene that was filmed out on the Bonneville Salt Flats in Utah. Obviously, for this scene, they couldn't just haul the Black Pearl all the way out there, but Johnny still had to be able to interact with something physical, so they gave him a rope to interact with. Fun fact, it was actually tied to one of these things, a cherry picker. This importance that the filmmakers give to these physical interactions really shows best in the Maelstrom battle scene, because even though the scene would require dozens of actors and stunt people to interact with dozens of CG characters, in a fight scene with explosions and rain and people swinging to and fro from two different ships inside a massive whirlpool of CG water, they still tried to do as much as they could practically. And so they built two full-size ships, which took 600 people three months to build and required nearly 500 tons of steel. That's about the weight of two Statues of Liberty. And in order to get the ships to rise and tilt, they put them on the biggest hydraulic gimbals ever used in filmmaking. These gimbals required 600 meters of hydraulic hoses, pumping nearly 4,000 liters of fluid. 
Then, to be able to light the scene properly, they built the biggest concentration of lights ever used in the industry. In total, 1,400 space lights were needed to cover 45,000 square meters of space, and nine 10,000 amp generators were needed to power it all along with miles and miles of cable. But even after having a location for the scene to take place and a way of lighting it, they still needed to create the ambience. And so they added huge amounts of rain, ocean spray, smoke, explosions, wind and flying debris. Interestingly, what this really achieved was a harsh reality that pirates in this situation would have actually felt. The actors were wet and cold, so they were really feeling miserable. Their costumes were heavy and sticking to them, making their movements slower and harder. They were really getting splashed by spray and trying to avoid being hit by flying debris. And now, instead of just acting, they were also reacting. They weren't just pretending to be on a moving ship, but instead were trying very hard not to slip and fall. And they weren't just imagining that they were pirates in a storm, but instead fighting to survive it. Number three, footage. The last reason for using practical effects as a base is just simply that the more you can do practically in camera, the more reference material you're going to have and the less you end up having to do digitally. And this becomes perhaps most apparent in the fight scene between Jack Sparrow and Davy Jones. Obviously Davy Jones is a fully CG character and had to be done digitally and obviously they can't really fight up on the yardarm if only just for safety reasons and obviously big swooping shots like this one are too long and extensive to do practically and so better to do digitally. But animating a fully digital Johnny Depp would have been complicated, time consuming and less convincing and it would have also meant that there would have been nothing real left in the scene to convince us that what we were watching was real. So Johnny learnt the fight choreography on a yardarm on set. Then they filmed him and a stuntman in a mocap suit fighting in the rain. Then they captured all the close-up shots and camera moves. So now, even though the backgrounds Davy Jones himself, the mast, the sails and the yardarm ended up being recreated digitally, Johnny Depp's performance anchors them all to reality. You can see this actually happen in the initial swooping shot. If we play it slowly right up until this point here, the shot is 100% CGI, even Jack Sparrow is a digi-double. But then they use this piece of rigging to cross in front of them so they could transition to the live action Johnny fighting on set. Even though some people think that At the World's End wasn't as good as the first two films, and others claim they made it a bit too long or that they rushed it, they did manage to make us believe some pretty incredible things. They made us believe that stones were crabs, that there were multiple Jack Sparrows, and that you can tip over a ship by running from side to side. But best of all, they made us believe in an epic swashbuckling pirate tale without ever setting sail. <laughs>